Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Before we get started, please take the time to subscribe, then click on the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. And this is episode 125, I believe. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> anyway, uh, today's kind of an interesting show because I'm going to um, work from an article that I got um, called 18 Reasons Why You Don't Want to Buy an RV. And uh, let's see if I can figure out who wrote this. Sandra uh, Lotham um, on 6-6. She wrote it. And uh, Anyway, it was kind of interesting. It's got a lot of interesting um, points to it. Um, basically, it's kind of started out as road war uh, warriors be beware. Uh, for some, the American dream is to own a big house with a p <laughs> picket fence. For others, it's a house on wheels. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a very true statement. So I'm going to go through their 18 different reasons why you should uh, beware or not uh, why you really don't want to buy an RV. So let's get started. So uh, looking at this, it says the number one is RVs can be insanely in expensive. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so they're uh, saying um, if you're planning to go big, a new class A motorhome starts, yes, starts around 50000 to 100000 According to uh, Rover Pass, uh, I think it's higher than that. Don't you think, guys? Uh, smaller motorhomes don't approach uh, don't approach seven figures, but still range about forty thousand to one hundred thousand. Uh, okay, these numbers seem kind of low. Uh, travel trailer, pop-up campers, and fifth wheels are um, are more economical, starting around. 10,000, 15,000, and topping out at 50,000. Those numbers seem really, really low. Um, hmm. Anyway, but yeah, that's what they said. So, <laughs> uh, fifth wheels are over 50, good fifth wheels, well over 50,000. I can tell you that for sure. So, that was a little surprising. The next one is buying an RV can be a minefield. A minefield. Uh, yeah. In this article, uh, they say very few people look forward to setting foot in a car dealership and no difference with RVs. Buyers can expect to deal with similar frustrations um, from um, rampant upselling to uh, scare tactics. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's definitely, especially when you start getting into safety equipment. Um, to the pricing games, of course, the sales people, uh, people ignorant and, and sales people ignorant about what they're selling. Study up before even thinking about going to a dealership and don't be afraid to ask questions. So that's a big one is making sure your deal, uh, dealer, uh, even knows what the hell he's talking about. So it's important that you <laughs> do your homework, you be the expert. So in case you get uh, dealt a, a dealer that's a little dopey, uh, you can either ask for a new one or move on to a different dealership. Uh, it's good to be a little wiser than them. And then uh, the best dealer would be the person that goes, I don't know, but I'll find out kind of situation. So yeah, but, uh, and, you know, they'll throw numbers at you that uh, you, know, you could be financing for a lot longer than you want to just to make the numbers work. So, yeah, I'd be, uh, dealerships can be, I don't care, even cars, it's frustrating. 
And the next one is, which I believe is number three, is RVs are gas guzzlers. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I will never forget when I had our 40-foot um, Discovery, that's when gas hit $4 and five, uh, $5 a gallon for a short time. And I remember uh, I was at the border of um, Oregon and California, and I had to get gas um, was yeah at Lakeview, Oregon, and that particular day their gas uh, pump literally said five in front of it five dollars, and uh, ninety gallons of five dollars a gallon. Oh my God! I mean, there was a bill that I was like, I was in tears. I mean, I was just oh my gosh! It was I can't remember exactly what it came out to it on my calculator in front of me, but uh, it definitely made you choke. Um, so yeah, I mean, and then if that was diesel now, uh, at the time diesel's actually gotten higher than, uh, gas, but, um, the problem is with the gas, um, rigs is they, you know, you'd be lucky to just think 10 <laughs> uphills, eight, 10. If you're doing over 10 gallons per, uh, um, 10, 10 gallons an hour or whatever they call it. Uh, yeah, you're uh, you're doing good. But yeah, they do drink the gas. And so you just need to put that into the budget and realizing that travel, 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 travel is un, isn't always the key. Sometimes travel, stay in place, travel, stay in place and, and move with your finances too. Like, okay, we can afford $100, $200 in fuel uh, at the beginning of the month. Let's do our moves now uh to fit the budget so yeah uh i don't think a lot of people think about that expense but it's it's big i also just realized i said miles per hour so per uh i don't know what i said but miles per gallon is what i meant to say so just make sure you guys i'm not totally losing it here i'm trying to read a very tiny screen and i'm using my cell phone to read this because uh and it's very small print, and I got to watch my other screen, so I'm kind of jumping around, so I'm making a few dumb mistakes there. But so anyway, let's move on to the next slide, which is number. I just lost it, and I found it again. So here we go. RVs depreciate like crazy. Uh, I talked about this in the show, I think, before this one. Uh, I talk about it a lot, actually. RVs are a terrible investment. So don't even think they're anything like a house where they could appreciate. Most of the times they do. But RVs, if you buy new, oh my, you're going to take a big, big hit. If you're buying used, the hit isn't as much. But the more used you get, the more repairs, and you could actually make up the difference. So uh, no matter what, do not think an RV is a good investment. It just plain old is not. And the next point in this article, which I agree with, uh, this is uh, number five. RVs can be terrifying to drive. Now, I, uh, I, I, I'm not as terrified as I used to be, but there are situations where it's terrifying. <laughs> um, going up passes sometimes, down passes, uh, crosswinds, those are scary and heck. And then insane drivers. That literally hang out in your blind spots all the time. Um, all I can say is learn to go the pace you're comfortable with and the hell with the rest, rest of the people. And one is give yourself extra space between cars, which is frustrating because when you do that, the little hot riders weave in and out in front of you taking up that space. But keep that space because there's been times where I've had to put the brakes on hard Boy, that's when you realize you got some tonnage behind you because you are not stopping as fast as you would without an RV. So, yeah, driving an RV can be terrifying. And it sometimes it isn't so much you as it is the people around you and some of the terrain you may be on. Um, and, of course, weather. Just weather, weather, weather. Um, you got to learn to say stop. Even if you got a schedule, and the weather's bad, stop. Find a place to stop. It's just not worth it. So let's move on. 
And the next one here, uh, I believe it's number six. Uh, RVs aren't meant for urban exploration, which means in the cities. Nothing's designed for big rigs. Nothing. Uh, even 18 really, if they don't go exactly to their destination, they could get in big trouble. The parking does not fit. Par uh, it's just you need to learn that RVs are meant to stay out of the cities and you need to jump over to your little car. Um, and you'll notice people that live in a city, uh, the smaller the car they buy, the better. Uh, RVs are not meant for cities. And uh, some people will never learn that. But uh, really, when you come into a big city, drive around it. Uh, if you want to explore that city, <laughs> park outside of it and use some of the uh, buses or trains or subways they have. Uh, otherwise, it's just nothing but a heartache. Number seven in this article, <laughs> they're saying you just can't park an RV anywhere overnight. And that's getting worse and worse and worse. And it's going to continue to get worse and worse because of the abuse. Um, and the cities, outside cities are getting wise to it. Not to mention there's having, they're having trouble with homeless people living in RVs. So they're just getting stricter and stricter and stricter. And some of our BLM lands or some of our Forest Service lands, because of abuse or maybe it's even fire safety and things like that, um, you can't expect that those are going to be free or available forever. And we're losing a lot of our Walmarts. We're losing a lot of places that don't want you to spend the night because of issues they've had. And even casinos are... Um, they're embracing RVers, but in some cases they're actually setting up their own mini RV parks so they're not free anymore. But uh, they are great places to spend the night uh, in most places, but you need to check ahead. And one of the big things that's going on out there is even when you go to Walmarts and stuff like that, even if they're posted, a lot of people say that uh, if you go in and talk to the manager, you may have the ability to spend the night. So... Anyway, but yeah, you just cannot park overnight anywhere you darn well please anymore. And uh, that's kind of sad. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. All righty, we're back. That was Ford RV Refrigeration. Great, great people there. Go check them out if you're interested in either repairing or having an issue with your RV refrigerator. Or if you want to learn how to get certified to work on them, they actually have a certification school. So go check them out, uh, our, uh, Ford RV Refrigeration. All right, which brings us to number eight in this list here. You can't escape housework in an RV. <laughs> so true. Except people like nomadic fanatic that probably can let clothes pile up and all that stuff. But if you're with your hubby, most likely that's not going to be tolerated. The big thing I've learned um, is if you take it out, you put it away. Get in that habit. And then also there's a place for everything. If you have keys, things lay on counters, you like keys, put up key hangers. Um, getting organized, putting away things that you're done using. And if you ever stop that process, it piles up. Uh, it happens with clothing. It happens with dishes. comes with equipment, uh, computers, uh, cell phone charging, uh, on and on. You cannot leave things out. It just it will haunt you in the end. So you to learn that process, put things away, 
everything has its place. That is probably the hardest thing to le uh, to learn. It's 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 a, it's a tough one to learn, definitely. I guess the other thing you, you got to definitely remember is you're still going to do dishes, and that's harder because you don't have dishwashers typically. You still got to do laundry. That's twice as hard, and uh, you got to fold your clothes. And when you bring them in, you got to put them away. Um, yeah, your chores that you have in a house or apartment do not go away. Number niner. Yep, it's hard not it's hard not to feel cramped sometimes. Very, very, very true. And I actually, this is the kind of funny phenomenon that Sherry and I went through. We lived in our fifth wheel for quite a while. I noticed when the weekends came or whenever, we're always looking for a reason to go for a road trip and go for a ride and go places. And then ever since we bought a house, we still like the road trips once in a while, but we don't have that drive. Like we kind of like, well, let's stay home. <laughs> we got things to do. We have space. Uh, our animals are happy. Uh, a lot of little things that you just didn't notice that what you're really trying to do is escape that cramped quarters. And uh, boy, you get in somewhere in Arizona where it's really hot and so you can't really go out because um, you, you, the air conditioners are going full blast. Um, or if you're extreme cold or something like that and you got to try to stay warm, you'll really, really start feeling cramped. And, uh, of course, the more you have in the RV, the, uh, I mean, it's bad enough with a husband and wife or partner, but can you imagine also with, and your pets, adding kids to that? Uh, there's got to be times that that RV can drive you nuts. So, yeah, let's move on. And the realities of owning things, you, you'll have yet another insurance bill. Yep. So if you got a truck and a RV, both have to be insured. And homeowners, those get kind of tricky. Um, so really, uh, when it comes, you think, well, I have one less uh, insurance bill. Not really. If you don't have homeowners on a house, you're going to have to have some kind of liability a homeowner's insurance on your rig and the items in your rig, and not to mention if you got stuff in storage. So uh, the insurance issue, including health care, uh, really no difference. Uh, it's just different shapes and sizes. So uh, yeah, insurances, you, you, you just got to, you got to have them and two, you're not going to really lose any. You, you're going to just w get rid of one and gain another. And item number 11 is uh, upkeep is expensive too. So yeah, everything when an RV seems to be expensive and if you take it in to have someone else do it, uh, there, it's always 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. It's always big numbers. So uh, people just, I mean, uh, it's nice. It's some things, a lot of things we can do uh, that we can fix and things like that. Other things, you just can't do it. Um, and, you know, if you got a diesel pusher, you're talking about, you may as well have an 18-wheeler. Um and these things are kind of uniquely built, and sometimes you can't get to the areas you need to to, to fix them. So uh, just keep in mind, you need to keep a very big, big, big budget on the side in case of an emergency, and it can happen anywhere, anytime. And this one's, uh, actually, I don't talk about this one enough. This is number 12. You need to have a place to park your RV when, you're not, when it's not in use or you're not using it. Um, unless you're living in it all the time. But if you're uh, not, then some places, like we made sure and bought a house that has enough room uh, and ordinances allow us to park an RV on the side of our RV, uh, of our house, <laughs> sorry. Um, but other people don't have that. That means you have to put in a storage unit. And those can be between 75 to $200 a month. Um, some of them are covered, some aren't covered, some are in the open. Um, be fortunate, like for example, ours is started up in Central Oregon at Sherry's folks' house, and it's free to us. Uh, but it's got disadvantages too. It's out in the weather, and um, you know I, I have to winterize it and pray that a little mouse doesn't get in it and things like that. But um, keep in mind, uh, depending on what things you're doing, you may have to store that RV, and you need to ask yourself, how are you going to do it, and can you afford it? 
And uh, the next one here, I, I think is a really good one, actually. It's number 13. You're still vulnerable to the elements. And so people say, well, I just, you know, I keep following good weather. Well, even when you follow good weather down, you know, like down here, uh, out of nowhere, we can have windstorms. Um, and, and you've seen the crazy weather we're having in um, uh, Plain States. Oh, my gosh. They're getting terrible stuff. There's, uh, I think, a f living free guy. He got one of his trailers demolished from um, hail. Um, if you have any water leaks and things like that, and you hit them on soon, and this is all our good weather places. Of course, there's the freezing temperatures if you decide to take your RV up to Alaska and you hit the bad part of a season and get a cold snap and you weren't prepared for it and you damaged some pipes and or filter systems and stuff like that. Um, uh, as opposed to like a house where a lot of our houses are built for the environment that we live in. And RVs are really not typically the best for insulation, nor are they the best for durability for windstorms, tornadoes, anything like that. You're vulnerable. Good to know, good to remember. And the next one here, I think this is number 14. Um, you'll be buying a lot of RV accessories, no doubt. Whether it's chairs, steps, covers, uh, lubricants, um, waxes, uh, Oh, hoses and on and on and on is all these little things and plus sometimes when you live in small quarters you have to buy special equipment to kind of fit small quarters better for your kitchen for your living room um, also when it comes to television when it comes to internet uh, you may have to put in different adapters and if you want to have more boondocking then you also have the accessories of solar and all those good things and so a lot of people that's why it's always good to start your RVing like a year before you're ready, ready hit when you're ready to hit the road. That way you can start buying the stuff ahead of time instead of all at once. And uh, of course, the more videos you watch and stuff, the more you'll pick up on items that are good and some items that maybe aren't so good. Um, you know, chocks, um, blocks. Oh gosh, there's just tons of things and tools, of course. And uh, having lots of tools uh, available in case you get stranded and you need to try to fix something. Um, air pumps. It just goes on and on. So uh, keep in mind, you're going to be spending a lot of money on RV accessories. And this next one's actually quite humorous. And I think that's what makes most of these uh, RV channels interesting. Number 15 is RV life can be a social minefield. Uh, yeah. Um, between the kind of crazy people that you may run into, uh, we've run into alcoholics. We've list, uh, ran into domestic fights. Uh, gosh, there's been crazy things. Um, you, I mean, there's just crazy people. Uh, people that don't care about you, don't care about your peace and quiet, uh, may not like your kids or have kids, uh, have barking dogs. Every RV park is an adventure, and you need to deal with it, and and you got to be passive a lot of times. If you're not, you could get yourself hurt. So uh, that's actually a very interesting uh, thing. Uh, RV life can be a social minefield. Um, not to mention where you go, finding planned events, live entertainment, coffee hours, uh, different towns may shut down more, the little small towns, may, most businesses might close after five, which is, uh, when I moved, first moved to Central Oregon, it was a shocker to me to find out most stars aren't 24 <laughs> seven. So uh, yeah, it's um, being uh, open-minded to the different areas that you go. Uh, one is dealing with the people, dealing with the businesses, and the social life around that area. Good to note. And number 16. One word it says, sewage. Yeah. Uh, if you don't like dealing with sewage, you're in the wrong business. You do not want an RV. <laughs> you will deal with your poop. You have to. You've got to clean your tanks. You've got to run macerators sometimes. 
Uh, you're going to have times where things uh, may not be flowing so well or flowing too well. Uh, you may have valves go out. You may have to put cleaners in the tank. You may have to get them cleaned. You may have to put deodorizers in. You got to make sure and try. You should use one ply toilet paper so the uh, paper breaks down. Um, never do you have you ever had to think about poop so much until you buy an RV. It's a 24/7 thing of just keeping in mind how long you've been using it, when's the last time you used it. You can't just flush them normally. Normally you should build up the water and then flush them that way because things pile up, things dry out. Oh gosh, uh, tanks could crack, um, hoses could leak. Uh, different places may have different kinds of, the hose may be 20 feet away, 30 feet away, right next to your RV, maybe on the wrong side of your RV. Uh, you have to have adapters. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. And it's all about poop, sewage. And uh, if you're not willing to deal with sewage every day, then RVing is not for you. Number 17. They say RV quality can be very poor. That is a big 10 for big buddy. <laughs> Those, they're just, RVs are more designed uh, and I think they're starting to kind of change change their meds mindset a little bit but RVs are for weekend warriors they're not designed to do this hardcore living and go down dirt roads and do all these things and if you do you may pay the consequences and then some are just not built very well and they're lemons and they'll cost you a fortune to keep fixed you have to fix I met one guy at a forest something and uh, oh my gosh, the things he told me has gone wrong with his rig was a nightmare. Was not happy. Did not sound like he was a happy camper at all. So keep in mind, no matter how much you spend on an RV, they could be a lemon and they may not be very durable. And you need to treat them that way. And uh, to think you can take them down the old dirt road like your truck, you're asking for trouble. So keep that in mind. And the last thing that's on this list, no, actually, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the last one, is the logistics of RV travel can be exhausting. Uh, yeah, uh, it's not so easy as grabbing an atlas and just heading down the open road. Uh, that's what they're talking about. Sometimes you've got to keep in mind the roads that you're going to be on, the terrain that you're going to be on, or you can be open desert and uh, keeping in mind weather, if you go a higher altitude, you could hit snow, could hit bad weather, you could be uh, side winds, there could be tornado areas, it could be flooding, um, and then just generally knowing uh, how to get around, uh, you need to uh, be good at your logistics, and uh, better to do it a little bit at a time than keep doing it every single day, moving, 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 moving. Otherwise, you'll go nuts because you'll get to some place and find out, oop, there is no overnight camping here. What are we going to do? Have you set up alternatives? Um, I think a good person, a good channel to follow right now is Freedom Theory. Uh, Why they travel, they have a baby, so they uh, um, they tend to only drive a small distance, like 200 miles at the most, and have veritables of places to stop because of the baby <coughs> excuse me and if one fails they have a backup and they talk about that a lot so um, the one thing by the way I cannot understand is why Kaylee sits in the back seat of the truck with the baby my wife just goes is she <laughs> I could believe my wife goes is she still sitting in the back seat <laughs> it's like we don't watch every video and it's like there's no way I would be able to stand driving with my wife in the back seat. I feel like I just I couldn't do it. Um, so uh, anyway, that's our personal problem, not yours <laughs> or theirs. It's just something that we get through the video and we can't watch the whole video because it just drives us nuts the whole time. She's in the back seat, so uh, uh, you know I understand it, but uh, just it's just not right. <laughs> anyway, logistics. Um, so uh, you can't imagine how much that can be a pain in the butt. And, and you get better at it over time, by the way. 
Um, but uh, even the best people, they get caught off guard. Or your GPS <laughs> lies to you and sends you down a dirt road with nowhere to turn around. That's even better. So, yeah, so that's the list. So uh, let's move on to uh, some other stuff. Well, guys, it's not all negative. <laughs> it really isn't. Um, that's just good stuff to know to help make the decision whether you want to go forward. But I did get a kick out of uh, a video that Line Screw One did that had a Buddhist uh, Buddhist believer. I'll just say that. I don't know the proper name for him. And uh, I actually learned a few things about that. One is I didn't realize Buddhists didn't believe in any god. They just believe... Um, but they say that they also doesn't mean that you can't um, exercise some of the, the um, processes and beliefs along with your faith. <clears throat> so that was, that was kind of interesting. Um, the one thing that she was bringing up uh, in the video was uh, happiness. And so uh, um, one of the things she's pointed out is a lot of like travelers or people that it doesn't have to be just traveling. It could be something else. Um, but to keep traveling as a nomad from point to point to point to point is you're always trying to fulfill some kind of happiness. And then you get to that point and then you realize uh, you're still unhappy. And what she was uh, bringing up is happiness, uh, whether you do travel from point to point to point, or if you live in a home, uh, live in a certain area, uh, you're stagnant, you're not moving to different places, uh, you have a family with kids, what she was trying to uh, point out was learning to be happy within yourself. Um, take a look around you and, and, and be satisfied and happy uh, internally. So no matter where you are, in life or where you're at, you can find happiness. Um, now, what she did, in a, a, and I'm sure that's a whole other lesson, but if you're in a situation where you aren't happy, like let's say you have a, um, domestic, a domestic issue in your family or something like that, uh, you also have the responsibility to change that to become happy. Uh, but she didn't go into those kind of issues, other than the fact that Learning to be happy and content as you are where you are is uh, your first step. So, uh, I mean, it's so easy to watch the videos and, and see all this traveling and all that stuff. But w the big question would be why? Why are you doing it in the first place? Why do you want to? Um, is it just for a change of pace? You've only lived once. You got, never got to do adventures. Um why are you doing it? Are you trying to escape or hide from something? Um, that, I mean, her show he did really made me think about um, why some nomads do what they do, why some don't, some why they travel and they never seem to be happy or they always seem to be having bad luck. They don't seem to be happy. Um, her point is happiness starts with you. And I think that's really good um, information. Are you happy? Well, you know, all you have to do is wait a day and um, <laughs> get back on YouTube to find RV goofiness or craziness. And uh, no exception to this. Uh, so this next module, I actually waited a day and then I just started this. And it goes right back to the RV Odd Couple again. Yes, and uh, it seems like there's certain channels that seem to just have a magnetic field that just brings oddness to their lives. And uh, anyway, so with no exception, the Odd Couple. <clears throat> so uh, apparently uh, they're in California and uh, they're sleeping at night and some truck drives up to their rig why they pick theirs, I have no idea. And uh, uh, make that long story short, they checked a few rocks in the top of the roof, which, of course, you know, when you're in the RV, you have no clue what the heck's going on and your dog's going nuts. Um, but uh, I, I do uh, 
commend them for doing a video on um, protection. Uh, they also found out that 911 didn't work in the particular area they're in. And they also are, uh, uh, they carry weapons, which I do too. And uh, being in California, um, which is not a red state, <laughs> so uh, uh, you need to know what the laws are in different states. And, you know, if you're an RVer, you're going to be jumping between states a lot of times and what's acceptable in one is not good in the other. So they did a very good overview of uh, things you need to know about carrying. And uh, they also talked about escape routes in the RV and everybody's roles in the RV. <clears throat> so uh, uh, that was good. That uh, was a great video. Uh, I went into the description and uh, looked around and... Um, yeah, there's no doubt there's always links in there to a place where you can go buy things and uh, follow their Amazon links. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I'll give them an, uh, an A for that, that video just because uh, they did talk about safety. They did talk about gun carrying, uh, gun procedures while in transport. Uh, one, uh, some states don't recognize your RV as a home. They recognize it as a vehicle and the rules for carrying uh, weapons in a vehicle as opposed to a home. Uh, also, when you, in California, they mentioned that if you park your RV in a campground, then it's considered a residence at that particular time. So, uh, yeah, quite interesting. So uh, uh, check it out in the description of our show. I put a link to the video that they did on that. So anytime I talk about anybody's videos, um, Good, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, I, it's only fair that I identify their video and give them a link. And uh, uh, if you like what you're hearing and what you're seeing, make sure I'm, I highly recommend you subscribe to those channels. So, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, I, I'm seeing so much more of this. Um, and I, that's what I keep bringing up in this show is, uh, it's changing out there, guys. And uh, uh, I'd be terrified anyway to take an RV to California nowadays anyway because of the issues they're having with the homeless and all that stuff and, and crime. Um, but I, I, I guess I shouldn't stereotype the, the state either. So uh, keep in mind, safety, escape routes, no to gun laws, and wherever you're at, find out whether you have access to 911. That uh, uh, if not, w if your phone works, what number would you call if it isn't 911? So uh, good information. Highly recommend uh, you watch the video. I put the link in the description. And uh, if you uh, like the channel, make sure and subscribe to them. And moving on to our next subject, uh, Jan and <laughs> Dana Jin Nevada. Uh, this has been a good week for both the channels I'm talking about. Um, they're doing a video, or I did a video uh, by the time we hear this show, about uh, creating a YouTube channel. And uh, they brought up a lot of good points and uh, a few things they might have missed. But uh, starting a YouTube channel, uh, I'll tell you right now, I have like uh, 11 of them. <laughs> Most people don't have that many. Most people just have one. So over time... Uh, for our example, um, we've uh, changed. So when we had a, a RV Travel Buddy, um, which was the channel that this was the channel RV Travel Buddy, um, it was focused on one subject, which was traveling in the RV. And uh, that's the ideal way to have a YouTube channel is having it focused and niche um, based on whatever you're doing. But as time has gone on, Sherry and I have gotten into new things. Uh, we're not traveling as much. And so we decided before we bought our house to switch the channel over to a new name, which was Outdoor Travel Channel, because we were uh, doing much more road trips and uh, we uh, wanted it to be more versatile. And of course, because it's that way, we don't grow like the other channels. Um uh, as soon as we're probably full-timing again, our channel will probably go nuts. 
Uh, so while that was going on, we wanted, uh, uh, you, you saw we used to have a lot of cooking on the Outdoor Travel Channel, and we used to have some other things on there, uh, boating and some other things, and um, uh, there's no doubt that we needed to break those away. So we created, a, and plus I have a radio station, <clears throat> So, and another thing we have is a YouTube channel for fun. Now we have a studio. We also have a one for uh, uh, some Muppets, which is uh, we call it the, the Turds, uh, T-E-R-D-S, and we wanted a funny name for them. Anyway, so that's a totally different subject, totally different layout. And so eventually, like the cooking, we now have a new channel called Cooking with Ranger Rob. And got the cooking has now gone from this channel which is Outdoor Travel Channel, um, we kept, um, uh, we sort our boat so we don't have to worry about the boating si section in that anymore. And um, uh, we still do Arizona Living on the Outdoor Travel Channel and um, not sure if we're going to leave that there or not. But um, eventually we want Outdoor Travel Channel to be just our RV Talk Radio and stuff like that. But we have channels for other things. Paradigm Chimes has its own channel. Um, Arizona Talk Radio has its own YouTube channel. We have Northwest Custom Image, um, Images, which is some art stuff that Sherry and I do, resin art. Uh, we have another channel on the radio station, Cutting Edge Radio Network. Uh, gosh. Um, Oh, uh, Imagine 180, which is uh, some uh, Law of Attraction stuff we do. Paradigm Chimes, I think I said already. Uh, we have one for product reviews. And since it's just not our, you know, we'll sometimes do a coupled up kind of video if it's RV related and it's not, or it's not beyond that. We have another channel called Check This Out People. And uh, so, yeah, we get, we kind of branched it off so uh when uh the more that we found out that we had some other kind of think subjects we wanted to do we uh created other channels so yeah i mean if you don't have to have one youtube channel and you can do it under the same account by the way uh same happens with our facebook pages and the same thing happened with our twitters is we branched them off to let them be independent so they're more, more niche. So cooking with Ranger Rob is definitely just cooking. And uh, uh, I know, the, the nickname Ranger Rob came from long, long time ago when we I used to do hunting and fishing a lot uh, up in Washington State. And uh, I think we're up at Nia Bay fishing for salmon. And the guys in there, you know, we all had our own boats. And one of them started calling me on the CB radio, it was CB radios back then, um, uh, Ranger Rob. And I thought it was kind of cute and kind of stuck with me. And so eventually I actually bought the domain and now I own the trademark. But uh, so that's where Ranger Rob came from. It was actually an old nickname for hunting and fishing. Anyway, um, so what are we talking about on YouTube channels and what it takes to be successful? Is it's harder now than it was before. Um, it used to be a time you could just start a YouTube channel and it was instantly monetized. Well, politics have changed, uh, advertisers have changed, and, and making money on YouTube is driven by its advertisers. And so, over time, advertisers are saying, "Wait a minute, my ads are showing on a, you know, a cult kind of thing, and I don't want to be associated with." So the advertisers started saying yay or nay or where their videos are being played instead of being random. And uh, so uh, that's also what caused different algorithms. That's also what's been causing some of the demonetization, which means that people qualified to be monetized, but then advertisers were um, uh, not happy to be on them. And then eventually uh, YouTube started making their own algorithms to say, you know, um, our advertisers don't like this, and so they'll demonetize um, sites um, based on either language or subject matter and stuff like that. And, of course, it's, uh, there's the argument it's gone too much to the left. And uh, I agree with that, um, but I'm hoping they find a good middle ground. That's all I'll say about that. Because um, 
on our radio stations, of course, we come across pol po uh, political things. And so uh, we've never had any issues, but um, we're not hardcore and we're really, we're very cautious. Um, but yeah, um, having a niche, uh, they did bring up some of the things like, uh, um, be yourself, uh, but the more polished that you start getting, the more, if you really want to make money on YouTube, um, like the different channels, like, uh, they say they make a, between three and $500 a month, where if you watch the, uh, this other, uh, sh um, group I was talking about last time, they, uh, are making more than that, but they are, uh, polishing their videos much more and, um, you know, it's all depends on you. It's, it, it is work and it is a pain in the butt. And, uh, uh, eventually there's certain things you got to get really good at is making your, uh, making your thumbnails, uh, your sound is important. Um, you know, getting good cameras with stabilization that really helps. And then editing, learning to keep them short and sweet, not, you know, certain things not to go want, 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 want. And, uh, so if you really want to turn YouTube into extra income, um, big time, you need to learn to be a good you YouTuber big time. Um, and like Dan and Jen, they kind of like, they know they could do things better, but they care. This is happy for, you know, if you're not having fun, if you're not enjoying vlogging, um, then it's not for you. Uh, the first thing you need to do is make your YouTube channel fun for you. Then as it goes, and if you find out you got something people want to watch, then you can refine it. Um, but uh, there's never a good time but the present is really the way to go. So if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, don't think anymore. Just do it. Um, and then let it mature into something. Because it takes forever to get a, a YouTube channel started. <clears throat> I know because I start new ones all the time. And uh, so, uh, yeah, just you be patient, consistent. Uh, you know, the other thing you'll find with the YouTube channel is and it is important that you do a regular schedule. Like uh, I've noticed, and that's why I'm doing it. Uh, people are happier knowing that the uh, RV Talk Radio is actually coming out every Monday again. And uh, um, I mean, I've always known that, but sometimes it's like, I just don't want to do a show this week or um, whatever. So we're actually, um, I've been doing enough of them. I'm actually backlogged a little bit. And so some of the subjects I'm talking about in this show, actually, you won't hear the show for a while. Um but I'm getting shows out, and that's important. And uh, um, RV Talk Radio on YouTube used to really go be big, but it's actually really big on podcasts and other platforms. Uh, but our YouTube is the one that really needed to come back to life. And so um, that's what we're doing. And so anyway, once again, uh, in our description, uh, the particular video I'm talking about with Jan and, um, and <laughs> Dan and Jen, Nevada, uh, I put a link to so you could go see their channel. It's actually a pretty good channel, but they tend to be more of uh, just sitting in front of a camera telling you about their day instead of showing you their day. And uh, if that's something you like, uh, I highly su su suggest that you uh, subscribe to them. And by the way, there's some traditional ones out there that you should lock, um, especially if you're a new RVer. Uh, RV Geeks, uh, that's a good one. RV Travel is a good one. RV Education 101, always good channels because they have a lot of DUI. Uh, DUI, is that right? Anyway, uh, DIY, <laughs> do-it-yourself uh, videos. Another person that I know personally that makes a lot of uh, do-it-yourself videos is Three Tails RV, and it's actually the number three, Three Tails RV uh, YouTube channel, um, and they have a Facebook page, uh, has a lot of uh, do-it-yourself projects on there. So um, those are always good standby channels to have for uh, fix-it items. 
and they tend to be more focused on um, do-it-yourself projects. And if that's something you're looking for, that's what they're all about. If you're looking for lifestyles, you got us, of course, we always talk about the lifestyles. And then, uh, then it's kind of funny to find certain channels that you can actually watch couples or individuals um, go through their daily lives. Like uh, uh, Living Free, he just did a video on, uh, he's had people sending uh, nightmare stories of RVing uh, to him. And so he, he's doing little segments on that. And uh, so um, it's nice to know there's people out there trying to make sure they get a realistic view of what are you getting into for the RV industry. Um, the Looking at YouTube as your supplemental income is probably the best way to look at it is once you can get monetized the money between the work how much work you put in it and the money um, it could get good but look at it as supplemental income um, where you can easily make a hundred two hundred three hundred a month uh, once you get your numbers up a little bit um, and that will pay for some extra gas um, food runs your camping uh, cover a lot of those expenses um, but you should have a real job or a real pension or a real um, uh, pension or or your social security things like that but uh, if you want to add on to it YouTube is a good way to go and then you'll notice a lot of people will talk about products and they're, uh, they have what's called a free uh, affiliate program with Amazon everyone can get one of those for free just go to Amazon go down to the bottom and you'll see a little link that says become an affiliate become an affiliate it's free you tie it into your um, bank account when you hit a certain number of uh, after referring certain products I believe if it's anything over ten dollars um, you get a deposit and then you find this nice little check or extra income in your bank <laughs> it's kinda nice so uh, and there's other programs out there like some people don't depend on YouTube so much because politics have caused them to be not monetized and so they depend more on um, um, I just want blank Patreon that was <laughs> I went blank <laughs> uh, some people use Patreon as their supplemental income because they can't get monetized because the subjects are talking about um, or ask for donations uh, like I, I was just looking at the bottom of uh, um, RV odd couple and of course they got a link that goes to a place where you can support them and give them uh, um, a uh, money through PayPal uh, we have the same thing and it's always a nice little extra boost um, occasionally so but with us if you want to do us a favor buy our poopy bags if you got a dog go to Amazon type in Ranger Rob poopy bags and uh, when is you're helping us you're buying a great product you're helping make it easier to pick up after your dog and uh, so it's just a nice thing and, and it's designed as our project to be our supplement income in three to four years uh, hopefully we're, that's a realistic thing it's not something to go nuts on but for us donations and, and uh, um, just subscribing to our YouTube channel uh, you can donate to us and you can also uh, buy a Ranger Rob poopy bags <laughs> and it helps us a lot so getting a, a good realistic uh, idea that building up even these people that have really popular channels now are saying that it, it took months and months and months before they could even get monetized and that's assuming that you actually are starting to create a channel that people are interested in watching and uh, don't get caught up in people's numbers um, I've learned this with our channel like uh, RV talk radio we're not a big channel because we don't have a niche channel however that does not mean that um, channels that don't have a lot of subscribers can't help you so uh, a lot of top st uh, shows out there or channels have done interviews with RV talk radio and uh, when they're back when they're just a thousand fifteen hundred subscribers 
and we help them out. And what's cool about that is once we do a show, it's there forever. So your show's constantly being advertised. So some people are idiots um, when they go and look at channels and go, oh, they've only got 3,500 uh, subscribers. Podcasts, you don't look at that. Podcasts have followers in a whole different realm. Uh, we um, send our shows out to TuneIn, iTunes, Spreaker, uh, iHeartRadio, et cetera, et cetera. We have a big reach, gigantic reach, and the idiots that go, that judge you just by your YouTube channel numbers are really foolish. Um, they're, uh, uh, and, and then what we've learned with Good Talk Radio is there's shows out there that want to be syndicated with us. And we're not one of the biggest radio stations out there, but even the big time radio shows that we have, we have great shows, big shows. They want to be on our station. And if we get them one viewer or one listener or a hundred listeners, they're happy. Very happy. That's good business. So remember when you're starting a channel, don't always look at the big guys to try to get you some uh, collaboration kind of stuff. Work with channels that are also striving to uh, grow too or uh, have other outlets like we do. Um, plus, you notice we have several other channels. Sometimes we can cross-link some of our stuff because the subject matters are close. So uh, we're uh, um, work with who will work with you. As long as you know somebody you want to work with. And don't be deceived by just looking at, say, YouTube numbers. That would be a foolish decision on your part. So hopefully that's been a good show for you. We kind of covered all kinds of goodies. Uh, I wish everybody out there to be safe. Uh, I do appreciate some of the uh, channels uh, did some good sh ch stuff this week. Please go down to our descriptions and go check out those channels and make sure you subscribe to them. And uh, with that note, um, everybody be safe out there. Buy yourself an RV and we'll talk to you next time. I'm Rob. Have a great day, everyone. Bye now. Thank you for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. Then go down to the description and think about becoming a member of our Patreon. This will allow you to get special content just for you and help us build future content. Thank you.